Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name is Jason Newland and this is my podcast called Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes and you can also find this podcast on many different podcast hosts such as iTunes Spreaker where it lives permanently but it's shared on other podcast hosts uh, Spotify iHeartRadio Stitcher TuneIn um, Castbox quite a few I'm going to get them all written on my wall so I can remember and I'll make the living room look nice so also yeah there's a Facebook page specifically for this for these recordings so just go into Facebook put let me bore you to sleep and the page should come up and you can like and follow and that way you'll be updated every time a new session is recorded because the only things I post on that page are these recordings these podcasts so yesterday Day I did a, a Google I did a Google search and I kind of spent my time doing that. Uh, today I managed to go out today for the first time in I don't know, it's gotta be a couple of weeks that I actually is it a couple of weeks? I don't remember. Maybe I did go. I'm sure I went into town last week on Thursday to get food. I had to get some cards. But yeah, I don't get out that much. And today I went to a group of some friends, a host or hold or whatever you call it and that was quite nice met a couple of new people which were very nice and my hair really got curly really big thick curly hair and I'm, my hair on my head that is and it was windy today and I actually said to one of the new people I met I said, I'll just let you know, my hair's not normally like this. It's normally have it short, but I thought I'd grow it because, you know, a lot of people of my age don't have the opportunity to to grow hair because they, maybe they're going bald or although I am receding and or they might have grey hair and I do have some grey hairs, but uh, not huge. Well, I don't, I've never counted them. And the person I was talking to, I said, I said, what do you think? Does my hair look a bit weird? And she looked at it like she, I think she said, oh, something like that. So I kind of, I thought maybe it's time to do something about my hair. Because I was going to grow it long. I decided not to now and I came home and my friend cut my hair for me so it's now sort of a grade 2 crew cut all over so it's longer than it usually is when I cut it myself because usually I cut it right to the scalp so um, I haven't gone that that far out and Plus, my hair grows quickly, 
does grow quickly. So it's you know it needs cutting again in another month or two. Um, I'm a bit tired having been out. I kind of, yeah, I'm sort of pretty much ready for bed myself. Uh, but I'll do this and then, you know, I like to try and produce the new daily sessions, at, you know, at the beginning of the day. So it's like midnight now. What is it? 28 minutes past midnight on this Thursday, whatever day it is. It's the 25th, I think, of um, April 2019. So it's... Uh, Yeah, yeah, it's Thursday. So what I'm going to do is try and release the recordings fairly early on in the day. And just gives it the whole day to be listened to. I don't know, well, you, could, you could listen to it in a year's time. It's still going to be here. But... Uh, what was I going to say? Um, I'm now feeding Andre twice as much food and I, as I was a week ago. So I asked my friend who also had a ferret and he said that it's natural they want to eat more in the summer because they they need the, I don't know, for whatever reason, they kind of, probably sleeps less, spends less time asleep, it's got more energy, maybe burning off the calories quicker, but I don't remember last summer, I don't really remember any of it, so I'm not sure if I was giving him extra food last year. I probably was. But he's making it very clear that he's hungry. So he said, I've now got to the point where when he gets up in the morning or the afternoon, you know, whenever I get up, I give him a packet of food, a packet of cat food. He's got dry food that he can eat all through the day. And then in the evening, so let's say for, for today it was 12 o'clock, I gave him his breakfast. And then it was, yeah, it was about six o'clock when he was asking me to eat again. And he, again, I, I mentioned this before, he's got into the habit of just running over to the bowl, looking in the bowl and looking up at me sarcastically. And then he, now he sort of, he jumps up on me. If I don't do anything, he jumps down and goes to the bowl again. Then he jumps up at me again. It's just, seriously, if he could, he'd just help himself to the food. He'd go and get it. So, I gave him a packet of food as well, so at six o'clock, so he's, he's not having any more till when I, when I get up tomorrow. So he's got dry food in his cage where he sleeps at night, or when I'm, when I'm in bed. So, but he doesn't seem to be touching that, so I don't know. Maybe, I imagine two packs of food's enough for him. But he does need to eat the dry food because that's good for his teeth. It's, I think, for his digestion and, you know, I think, I don't know. I mean, he's not a cat, but I do kind of give him cat food. He 
because the ferret food's all dry. So I also give him dry ferret food as well. And uh, you know what I'm thinking I might do right now? And you know I'm normally just chat and be boring and stuff. And I know this is all about boring, but how about we do a something a little bit trancey not trancey as in weird but I could uh, like, shall I it's like kind of a, a traditional sleep recording the kind of thing I do with the deep sleep whisper sessions but I won't be whispering although I am talking fairly quietly because uh, or shouting doesn't really conduce sleep or produce sleep or conductive to a nice sleep or productive conductive, productive wibbly wobbly bingy bongy bong So yeah, I don't know, perhaps I could. I was going to read a book. I'm just trying to find a book to, you know, to read a book out loud. But I was trying to think of what book to read because technically it needs to be a out of copyright book. So there's no longer copyright on it in the public domain. Um, I did found I found one book, but then I started looking through it and reading it, not not out loud, but sort of inside my head. You know, just standard reading, looking with my eyes and scanning the words. You know, reading, reading, yeah. And but some of it did not make sense. The book was a e is it edu file or something. It's so it's a like a PDF, but I think basically a photocopy of a book, a photocopy of the pages, and I've done that in the past. You know, you know, years ago, because I used to study chronic pain. I didn't just study chronic pain, as in the different. Uh, causes and the physiological side of it and you know the um, CBT mental uh, cognitive you know side of things but I also purchased quite a few dissertations from a college a hypnosis college where people were actually doing a dissertation uh, on chronic pain and the use of hypnosis in the help of chronic pain and yeah so I can't learn quite a bit from that I, I wish I still had that stuff I don't I could still get it back I do wonder sometimes if I managed if I came into some money I don't mean if I was like suddenly independently wealthy I don't know if I won the lottery or something like that um, I would buy every single hypnosis book that's available to buy and I would yeah that's what I would do so I would replace the library that I lost because I used to have a nice big I had hundreds of books on hypnosis. Some of them were expensive as well. Um, yeah, I kind of... Well, it's, it's, it doesn't matter now, but I'd, I can't, I'd like to replace those books. But also, you know, I'd buy every single dissertation. I'd, you know, every single... Uh, study 
that's you know that's been done on hypnosis I get it all I purchase it all available for my specific hypnosis library and then I just I just absorb it sometimes you know I used to feel because I used to have my books and bookcases nothing that unusual there I guess but the last I think that's the thing because the last time I had all my books out properly I think I, think I had five or six book cases and I had all my books out and I used to have a separate you know there was the psychology books I had quite a few textbooks and there was the psychotherapy books the counselling books there was the philosophy books and then there was the hypnosis books and I also had like a section for the Buddhist books so I had quite a few Buddhist books and uh, then I had a section for chronic pain so I had quite a few textbooks on that as well so I have it all separate and you know it might sound strange I didn't just have books as well I also had DVDs and CDs and uh, CD-ROMs uh, courses, video courses um, loads of video courses uh, there's a hypnotist friend of mine called Jonathan Royal and back in 19, 19 no, 2004 or 2005 I started down um, not downloading, I started purchasing his hypnosis courses and I purchased loads of them lots and lots and lots and they all used to come in DVD boxes and sometimes they'd have like four or five DVDs in one box and like this I'd never, I'd never seen a box like that which would have space for all the different DVDs and yeah I just remember that it was that was really cool I mean nowadays everything's sort of downloads and I purchased this course it was a hypnosis course back in 2000 and I think it was 2014 and I purchased this course can you believe this I purchased it it cost me about £650 and then the next day I found it online for free I was able to download all the videos absolutely free and could I get a refund? no and it was like I couldn't believe it Six. It might have even been more, but it was at least £650. It might have been more the 800 mark. And I was like, what on earth? What have I done? And um, <laughs> I've still got them. I've still got... And the download link, I've still got all... The, I'm, I'm never going to get rid of them because of how much they cost. But... It was. It broke my heart. <laughs> it really did. There's so much stuff available online. Um, even nice I used to have quite a few like Richard Bandler audios and uh, Milton Erickson audios where he did lectures on hypnosis and psychotherapy. And this was long before I even became a like a counsellor or even thought about studying counselling. So I was I had books on counselling back in nineteen ninety nine and I didn't become a I didn't start studying to become a counsellor until the end of two thousand and seven. 
and I had no intention of studying to become a counsellor. I just was interested in psychotherapy and, you know, how it kind of fitted together with hypnosis. Plus I did a course and it was hypnosis and psychotherapy. So, you know, they would study in counsellors and uh, therapists like Adler and Freud and Jung and, you know, people like that. And Carl Rogers as well. So I'd already kind of... And at that course was in 2002, I think it was, I did that course. So I you know, kind of... I suppose I, I edged my way towards what I ended up doing. But... Yeah, if I won the lottery, I, I think it'd be really cool to just purchase, get hold of everything, every book on hypnosis, and have like just a library. Just like, oh, it'd be so cool to have my own library, and then have every single DVD, therapeutic training, whether it's counselling. Gestalt therapy, whether it's uh, whatever, really, just the whole thing. You know, person centered counselling, uh, CBT, just uh, so many different types. Family therapy, child therapy, uh, bereavement therapy. And I thought that actually what would be really cool would be to travel around the world, not all the time, but just travel to different places and train and like do a weekend here and there or a week, maybe go to Florida and do a two week training with, uh, you know, uh, a, hip, a big hypnotist or not I don't mean size wise but just someone that you know I look up to or someone whose book I've read or go and listen to a seminar of a, a psychotherapist like Irvin Yalom that's someone that I'd love to sort of sit and listen to him talk Um. I think is he still around I hope um, I mean ideally I'd rather do it in England and just because still travelling but it means it's more accessible but I think it would be quite cool to sort of maybe go to like Canada or Australia and just do a, like a month intensive training in some new style of hypnosis or some new chronic pain relief technique or I don't know that sort of quite interests me to be able to do something like that in the future I did do a pain relief course actually some training uh, in mind mindfulness and it was a, a week long training course and how to help people using mindfulness for chronic pain which is really kind of what I've been doing for quite a long time I've incorporated those because um, a lot of the things that I have done has been guided meditation in some ways like a mix of guided meditation and guided hypnosis guided visualisation um, or just guided boredom you know so it's just a mixture of different things but what yeah so the last time I had all the books out properly 
was in 2007 before I went to college before I went to do the counselling course and I moved closer to where the college was because it was in a different town and I ended up with my books just being in plastic containers for the next two years or three years taking up half the room and the room wasn't very big so these containers were like got about I don't know 12 containers or something and there was like to the ceiling and uh, when I did have them all out in bookcases sometimes I just lay on my bed and I could feel that the knowledge from the books I was like absorbing that knowledge I know it sounds a bit weird but it felt that by having it there having those books there close by it was like giving me something you know I was yeah as I said kind of absorbing that and it allowed me to be able to talk without a script without much in the way of preparation and to be able to just like how may I have trust in my ability to come up with the correct words whilst making the recording or whilst I was with clients you know in the same process or if I was doing leading the group group sessions the group relaxation sessions I could just sit there and it just the, the stuff just came out of my mouth and it always always worked But I kind of felt like the I was absorbing that knowledge even from the books I hadn't read I was somehow carrying that knowledge around and it was available without me needing to think about it and I could just have trust in my own ability to say the right thing hopefully at the right time And I quite like that. And actually today I offered my relaxation services to a charity. And just say I said you can, if you wanted, I could do like a weekly relaxation thing group thing and you just have as many people in here as you like including the staff and I'll just sit in the chair and just talk for half an hour and maybe I'll even re like do it live on Facebook as well so just uh, stream it live with the camera facing me not the people because they probably want their anonymity and so instead of just the 20 people or whatever that might be there listening there's also the other four people on Facebook that can listen but uh, the lady I spoke to she said to put the details in an email and I get when I and she didn't say the word red tape, but when I hear that, the idea that I'm going to have to, I think the idea of having to convince someone that to 
allow me to do something for free which again is not what she said to me but it's just I got a sense that it's I don't I don't want to put that much energy into it you know in a sense of either it's a good idea or or not you know just do you want me to come and sit down and bore you all for half an hour and it would be different from this I wouldn't do this I'd be it'd be a very kind of thanks Andre he's just roaming around on the paper doing a very squirty one right now I don't know if you heard that but oh lovely I need to get a I need to get a carpet cleaner seriously I need to all get a carpet professional carpet cleaner or a new carpet but the um Yeah, I just, for me, it's, I'll offer my services once and then either people take it or they don't. I don't, when it comes to like hypnosis or relaxation sessions and the amount of times that I've offered pain relief or help with stress for people that have been, they've said that their parents are in a hospice or in hospital and I've said oh, well, I can help if you want and nothing comes of it and in the old days I used to go out of my way to try and convince people to you know let me help them or help their the person that they care about and I just I don't do that anymore. I offer once and then I leave it. And it's a shame because I could possibly be quite useful to some people. Also, there's a little ego part of me now. A little ego where I think, I think to myself, it's not that they should know who I am, because obviously I'm not going to be known to everybody, as the majority of the people in the world don't know who I am, but I don't feel like I should need to sell myself to the person, you know, sort of. I should just say look me up look me on go on just google me and go from there and you can see what I do but then that might put them off so I do knows it don't really matter to be fair it's just stuff in it it's just stuff oh I'm feeling so tired really really feeling tired I could so easily just drift off to sleep but properly you know proper just like as I sit here now I could so easily drift off It's weird because my eyes are closed and I'm breathing through my mouth and the cool air is sort of going into my mouth and covering the 
top of my tongue and I feel it in my throat and it feels quite nice. Even though I've got my eyes closed, I can still still see the light through my eyelids. Of course, it's a lot less than what it was when I had my eyelids open. I was on the bus today and I did a sneeze and it just became nothing and then about three seconds later I, I, I snorted like like a little pig like a little piglet just this weird noise came out. Very strange. Very unusual. I went to the library as well today. I had this idea that I'd make some recordings on specific issues and what I would do is read about the issues first and then incorporate that new knowledge hopefully factual information into a recording specifically for that issue so I got three books today from the library but actually I didn't end up getting three uh, well I did end up getting three but I was going to get four but when I put it into the uh, like the machine, it didn't recognise the barcode on one of the books, and I didn't know whether or not it meant that the machine didn't wouldn't uh, complete the processing of it. So I went downstairs and went to the counter and to get to the counter downstairs you go up basically go through the doors turn left and go down the stairs it's like a windy stairs it takes you quite a few steps you know one two three four five it's got to be at least 20 steps if not more and then you get off the steps and you turn left and then turn left again and that leads you towards the the counter and I said to the man well actually what was weird is as I'm walking towards the counter this lady stands up and starts walking really quickly to the counter as if she wanted to get there before me which she did and it made no difference because there was two people behind the counter. So I'm not sure what her benefit was. Anyway, she she got there and I was too busy focusing on my own library issue so the man behind the counter I think he had a beard but it wasn't a big beard it was one of those beards that I think it was quite styled very trimmed it's uh 
Yeah, it's very. It looked like he'd be a very considerate lover. <laughs> I don't know what that means. It's, it's, he said to me, hello. I said, hi. He said, can I help? I said, yeah. He said, that's good. And then we had a stare off, and I stared at him, and he stared at me, and I thought, I'm not going to talk first. You talk first. And he said, no, I'm not going to talk first. I didn't realise he had telepathy. So he was kind of telling me this, you know, I'm not going to talk first. How did you, but you just did. He said, no, I didn't. Did you see my lips move? I said, I wasn't looking at your, your lips. And he said, that's a weird thing to say. What, what is that you weren't looking at my lips? Well, I wasn't. Yeah, but it's a really strange thing to say. I don't see why it's strange. Yeah, but to just focus on the fact that you weren't looking at my lips makes me wonder what were you looking at? I said I was looking at your ears. He said, well, that's just rude. I said, I can't win, can I? I mean, I'm not allowed to... I'll tell you that I'm not looking at your lips. And... You're not happy with that. So, and then I say that I was looking at your ears. And you're not happy with that. So what would you be happy with? He said, it's not really about that, is it? that seems to be exactly what it's about he said listen I said well, I ain't got no choice am I you're in my mind you're talking into my mind he said yes I am now that freaked me out a little bit I thought oh I'm not sure I like the way you said that and he said I can still hear what you say as well even when you're thinking well, that's kind of the only way you'd hear, isn't it? If I'm not talking. Unless I was tap dancing Morse code. He said, that's, that's quite humorous. I said, yeah, I know. I can try and come out of at least one good line at each session. Even if it's a silly, absurd one. He said, yeah, I heard about you and liking absurd stuff. I said, yeah, I do. I tell you about the blow of the caravan and had a bucket of water. He said, "Yeah, he t tipped over." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Was uh, I don't spoil it though for people I haven't heard. That, that was yesterday's recording. Oh, was it yesterday? Was it? Yeah, 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 yeah it was. Yeah, I was quite pleased with that. But the thing is, it, it's not as if it was my. It wasn't my joke. I mean, I was just talking about what I remember happened in a film that I watched in 1994. It might have been late. Yeah, I think it was early 94. How on earth do you remember when you first saw a film? What, what do you mean? Well, it's a bit specific, isn't it? That you saw a film, that you don't remember the title of the film, you don't remember who was in it. It was, but but you remember the the year and roughly the part of the year that it was. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It just seems a bit strange. Well, we've all got memories, haven't we? It's just... I don't remember everything. I just have certain things connected to certain years. Like... I don't know, the... Madonna song, Like a Prayer. I'll always remember what year that was. And I remember I was in France... 
or Kent. There's one of them. I was at a, I was at the ferry port anyway, and that song was on, and that was number one in the charts at the time, and that was 1989. It's like, wow, yeah. I'm saying that, I don't remember. Well, you do, because you're me, on you? Yeah, I know, but just for the sake of the recording. Oh, 1989, was it? Oh. So how many years is that now? 89, 99, 2009, 2019. 30 years. 30 years ago and actually as we're talking about it my first hypnosis training proper hypnosis training was 20 years ago this month I think it was yeah I did a, an intensive I'd already done hypnosis training earlier in the year but this was my first hypnosis only course, just hypnosis. Yeah, it was an intensive course and it was proper deep stuff, really, really deep stuff. And I'd already got the NLP practitioner, the NLP master practitioner. But this was, and there was hypnosis involved in that, very much involved, but the so I'd already learned hypnosis so this was more I'd already read loads of books on hypnosis as well I'd been studying it for over a year at that point I'd already done a course in NLP during 1998 which also had hypnosis involved in it so yeah I kind of knew my stuff but this was intensive and I think it was seven days in a row and it was brilliant really really loved it and that was 20 years ago 20 years wow and now here I am 20 years later sitting in a what I didn't think I'd ever have would be my own flat my own home it's council it's rented, it's a council property but it's uh, social housing so it's a home for life if I want it to be never thought I'd have this I've got a little Andre ferret so I've got my son. Never thought I'd have a son, really. Never thought I'd have him. And I'm talking to myself, <laughs> doing the recordings, doing. Because you know, 20 years ago, this wouldn't be possible. I wouldn't be able to do this. You know, I mean, I'm sure there was ways, obviously, to put audio onto websites, but it was not easy stuff. And podcasts and stuff like that weren't around. And, you know, CDs were still the thing. You didn't download music online back then. 1999 it was just very slow pages and every oh was, the pages were full of graphics because it was that was the way to do it because I was building websites uh, for fun and you just load it with flashing moving images and moving text and it slowed the page down so much. You know, I remember, and also oh, the web pages. 
the pictures took so long to download. Or to, I, I don't really use the classes downloading it, but just to open up on the screen. I mean, I gave up on porn. It was just, I mean, I remember once the picture took so long to open up by the time it had actually opened up on the screen I was in a relationship with someone you know I didn't need it anymore it's just, just the internet was so slow really 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 I mean I'm I'm talking to people that probably know this anyway but it's, not, it's still not always that fast to be fair but how it used to be in that dial-up mode I can't do do the sound of it but and the way it used to like bounce ding 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 like that I used to love the sound of that because it was always a gamble it was always like is it going to work or not never really knew and then when it did work it's like oh this is brilliant oh I liked it so much absolutely loved the internet when I first discovered it just the knowledge the information on there you know the even now I mean I mean the internet is very clogged up with lots of stuff I sometimes think that maybe the internet needs to get rid of pages that don't work anymore you know any any pages or websites that no longer exist have them all deleted off of the search so that Google no longer brings up stuff from 10 years ago or podcasts are no longer available to stream just make the experience a lot easier a lot simpler a lot more pleasant I would say for the user yeah I think quite often what I do now is I put in if I look, if I search for something I'll put in the uh, tw last 24 hours or maybe the last 28 days or something to try and get rid of all the old stuff that's not maybe useful or it's not even available anymore And even my stuff, some of the stuff that I've got rid of and they're not doing anymore, it still comes up under the search. I mean, no doubt it will go eventually, but some of it's, it's not been available for over a year and it's still coming up under my name. So that's why I realised that from now on, with the podcast I'm not deleting anything the only changes I'll make is adding new podcasts and new sessions and you know I'm not going to change anything around or delete anything or upload it again just because it just messes with the search engines and also the podcast hosts as well that's what I'm going to do that's my thing I think just continue to make new recordings and hopefully the search engines will start to take on board the new stuff and Hopefully, eventually, the old links that no longer work will be gone. I'm hoping that would be nice. 
I was wondering, here's a question. In other countries, do you have a program called Blind Date? It's a TV show that is start, it's, it used to be on television on a Saturday evening, I think. Uh, with Scylla Black was the lady he was, she was like really really famous she was the biggest TV star in the country for a long time uh, in the 80s and she had Blind Day and Surprise Surprise with the two uh, programs that she did and she was much loved in this country and uh, Scylla Black she used to be a singer and yeah I think she was discovered by the Beatles or by John Lennon and she'd uh, sing a little song surprise surprise da, 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 da. between the eyes that's when you know da, da, this a surprise you see surprise surprise something like that now Blind Date that didn't have you didn't sing that but it was the music was do 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 Boom. That was a blind date. I think that was a tune for it. And the basic theme around the blind date was that there'd be one, three people sitting next to each other on separate stools. And there'd be a big uh, screen. And then on the other side of the screen, there'd be a single stool with uh, the, the single person. And the three people sitting on the other stools would compete with funny answers to questions in the hope of winning over the person that hasn't seen them yet and then get chosen for a date or blind date I always wondered I thought blind date this the term should be I'm surprised that's not being kind of frowned upon like un PC, you know. But uh, what was the other thing? Yeah, the host would stand next to the person that would be wanting a date, and they'd have like these wacky characters do a dance and do impressions and maybe uh, stand on their head and you know whatever really and whoever the person chose They'd like to choose, let's say, number three, because it'd be one, two, three. So if they chose number three, let's say number two, and then what Scylla Black would do, she would say, now, Chuck. 
let's see who you didn't pick. Or now, Chuck, let's see who you're not going on a date with. Or now, Chuck, let's see who you're missing out on, who you missed out on. Or now, Chuck, we're running out of time, just let's get on with it, you know, whatever. And so number one would come out and start dancing and doing spins on his head and, you know, just belly flops and, you know, he'd be wearing an astronaut's helmet, you know, just, you know, wild and crazy guy. And he'd just go and she'd, 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 the lady sitting on the stool would be pretending to be upset. And, oh, damn, I wish I chose you. And then uh, Scylla Blacks would say, oh, Tura then, to the, to the thing, said, and to the, the bloke with the helmet. And, uh, and he'd go away and the audience would clap and I never heard it but I imagine you hear a couple of people in the audience saying oh and uh, then you get an engine you know what's her name Silla Black would say now Chuck let's see the last one, number three, who you also turned down, and uh, the music would go, do 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 do, and uh, the person would walk around. Sometimes they just go running around the screen. Sometimes they look over the screen and the little look, little cheeky look. I think a couple of people even like crouched down on the floor and looked through the, you know, because the lady that was sitting on the the chair, there's also a man that they they alternated. Uh, I don't mean during it, but you know they had two halves to the program. One half you'd have a woman and three men. And then in the second half, you'd have one man and three women, depending on the which half was which. But the blind date now is hosted by a different person, and they have single sex things and it you know it's sort of more up to date because it's not we're not in the 90s anymore are we or the 80s and then the last person would be like you know she said uh, here Chuck here's here's Bobby He's the one you chose, and you're going to go on a date with him. And uh, she'd get all excited. And he'd get all excited. And the screen was still there, but this time, instead of walking around the screen to see her, or, you know, if it was a woman walking around to see the man. The screen would slowly pull in and slide in so they could like face the screen and then they could see each other for the first time so it's not really a blind date was it because they're going to already have seen each other before the date It's more blind meeting, perhaps. And then at the end, 
end she'd say she'd say at the end she'd say well go on then you two go and have some fun and then at the end of the show she said she used to have a whole, her own way of saying goodbye to everyone she say she was lovely I, everyone I loved Stella Black everybody did she was brilliant she brightened up Saturday evening for me and probably millions of other people and she'd say look into the camera and she'd say alright then jocks ta for now and she'd wave her hand she said ta and uh, then a the tune would come on do 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 Boom. And then the adverts came on. At this point, I'd usually be eating sweets. And uh, I think I used to have maybe. Ah, that would explain it. I think I'd have a glass of Coke. So maybe that's why I drink Coke now. That's why I've got a little bag of sweets. No, I don't. I don't. I do have a chocolate bar though. But I heard somewhere that chocolate's good for you. And I like to believe stuff like that. Even if I do see it's written on a toilet wall. So I'm going to go now and wish you a happy, wonderful, sleepy, weepy. Night, night. Remember, remember, remember that you deserve to be.